with Mary Mack. Today's our last episode for 2018, so we're going to do a little something called the New Year's pretzel episode. I had never really known what a New Year's pretzel was. I had seen them in bakeries, but I just assumed it was some different thing that people ate, you know, like a Kringle or those sorts of things. So I never really uh, looked into it. So I decided that would be a good thing to do, good thing to try making, since they're uh, prolific here in western Pennsylvania and eastern Ohio. So uh, I started looking into it. What I found, oddly enough, was mainly Pennsylvania, specifically Western Pennsylvania and Eastern Ohio are where they are prolific in this country. Uh, Very popular also in Germany. And what the New Year's pretzel is, it's an egg dough or a sweet dough formed into the shape of a giant pretzel and either iced or glazed and eaten specifically after Christmas, before New Year's or on New Year's Eve. You're supposed to eat a piece of this, and it traditionally brings you good luck. And apparently, if you don't eat this pretzel, this is why you have bad luck, which probably explains uh, three-quarters of my life why I've had bad luck. So, (laughs) now, hopefully, everything changes. Yeah, 2019 is going to be good now. Yes, because I ate a lot of the pretzel. So, so in my research, uh, I found a couple of interesting things. First of all, um, one of the things that Pittsburgh... Pennsylvania is known for, which is uh, very near to where I live, is the New Year's pretzel. And it got carried all over the country, largely from Pittsburgh, and probably when steel mills closed in the 1970s, people moved away and took their traditions with them, as they tend to do. So um, the New Year's pretzel is a beloved holiday treat for people from the Pittsburgh area, from western Pennsylvania. It's also a beloved holiday treat in Sandusky, Ohio. Oddly enough, I didn't really find a lot of places in eastern Ohio that had a ton of information on the New Year's pretzel, but um, there's a few places in Cleveland and Sandusky, which is on the uh, shores of Lake Erie, where it was a very popular traditional thing. And one, one of the things that connects everyone is being of Germanic descent. So where there's large populations of people from Germany who had immigrated and settled, that's where you find the New Year's pretzel. So, so that explains why it's all over Pennsylvania, because Pennsylvania has an enormous population of people of German descent. So thank you for giving us your fabulous pretzel. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to pronounce the German name of it. So what what's different about this New Year's pretzel? Well, it's not like a regular pretzel. It is not brined and boiled and then baked. It's actually made from, like I said, an egg dough, nice soft egg dough. And instead of being salted after, it's um, either glazed or iced. There's a lot of different ways that New Year's pretzels are made depending upon who's making them apparently, but they can be filled. They can have a nut filling in them. They can have a fruit filling in them. They can be not filled, uh, which is what our recipe is. They can be iced and decorated with sprinkles. It's very popular or decorated with slivered almonds and candied cherries. So there's a lot of different, I guess, depending upon where you're the heritage of your own family, there's a lot of different ways that people do it. The one thing that seems to be pretty consistent with them is that they are um, designated to be eaten for good luck in the new year. So um, the information that I got from Sandusky, the city of Sandusky, Ohio, was that the pretzels were usually eaten for breakfast on New Year's Day. And they would hang the pretzels by a ribbon from the light that hung over their dining room tables. And then they would cut the ribbon and the pretzel would fall down and, you know, they would cut it all up and everybody would eat it. So it's like this big thing, you know. So (laughs) a big splash on your table. On the origin of it from Germany, a couple of things that I found was that they were actually made by monks in southern Germany and they were given to children as a reward for learning things that they were supposed to learn for church. They were made in a pretzel shape to represent the crossed arms of children praying. Um, one is that it's a symbolically shaped loaf because the sign is a it's an old calendar sign for the winter solstice, which is a circle with a dot in the center. So that 
you know, the shape of the pretzel with the crisscross in it. The cross was added to represent four seasons. So you have that whole idea of the winter solstice and spring coming and four seasons. You also have a story of people parading through the streets with pretzels on sticks and passing that out, them out to everyone. So it's like a really festive sort of a thing that is like a celebration bread, like we talked about with Panatone. Panatone's a celebration bread. So the, the New Year's pretzel seems to have a history like that. It's a celebration bread. And it has a fond following, I would say, in the Pittsburgh and surrounding areas of Western Pennsylvania. Most grocery stores you go in, like when like today... Here we are on uh, December 30th, and today if you walked into a grocery store in western Pennsylvania or eastern Ohio, the first thing you're going to see when you go in is a table full of New Year's pretzels. And they're about 15 inches, typically, to sometimes they get really big. Like they'll make them maybe like two or three feet wide. There's a huge thing. But usually they're about, I would say, the size of a very large baking pan, which is going to be about a 15-inch pan. They use a full, the amount of like a full loaf of dough. So when you make this, you're going to have uh, enough dough that you could make a large loaf of bread with this recipe. So it's a pretty significantly large amount of dough. And it was uh, interesting. I had never made um, a New Year's pretzel before, so it was interesting making it as rolling out the dough. Be prepared to do some serious Play-Doh-like maneuvering with a large chunk of dough. Because it was, it took a while. You have to, your rope to make about, the size pretzel I made, which is about a, um, mine is about, was, we ate it. <laughs> mine, mine was about 14 to 16 inches wide. And I had to make my rope in the vicinity of six feet long of dough. So I rolled it, rolled it, rolled it, and then stretched it, stretched it, rolled it, rolled it, stretched it, stretched it. So it took up most of my giant steampunk table that I have here. So, um, it, yeah, it's a little bit of work. So it, but it was, it was a, uh, really neat, it's really neat to make one. So one of the things I discovered was an article in Pittsburgh magazine from December of 2017 with a recipe from Chris Fenimore, who is a local cooking show host, chef and recipe connoisseur. And his recipe is pretty much a typical, what we would call a sweet bread recipe, sweet dough recipe, which uses milk sugar, butter, eggs in in the base as well as the rest of the ingredients for dough. So it's pretty typical. Um, it's about the same as like you would use for panettone. Although this dough is a little more, uh, I would say it's a little bit more dense. It took a good bit of kneading. Now most recipes for uh, sweet dough will have you make them in a stand mixer or a mixer with a dough hook. Um, I, use, I don't like to make dough in a stand mixer like that. I always do my dough by hand, even large batch dough. So uh, I did this by hand also. And I like doing that because it really, you feel the dough in your hands, you know when it's right, you know when you've kneaded it enough. Uh, if it's sticky in the correct way that it should be sticky, not too sticky, a little sticky, nice and soft. So I, I did mine by hand. You are welcome to use a mixer or um, a stand mixer with a dough hook if that's how you prefer to do it. So this is the basic recipe that I used. One cup of milk heated to about 100 degrees. You don't want it to form a skin on the top. You just want to heat it up to where it's um, the same temperature that you would want water to be when you're using it to make bread dough. So about 100 degrees. A fourth cup of white sugar. A fourth cup of butter melted. You can use salted or unsalted butter, depending upon your own taste. Salted or unsalted butter. One tablespoon of yeast, three to four cups of flour, and one egg. That is your dough. You'll, you may need a little extra flour for kneading, but three to four cups should be sufficient. And I made this dough the way that I make all of my dough. I had the yeast directly into the flour because I, as I've mentioned before, I'm a big yeast murderer. So I did, <laughs> I did it the way I usually do and it worked just fine. So what I did, I put two cups of flour in a bowl a large bowl, a tablespoon of yeast. Oh, it also requires a half tablespoon of salt. So I put two cups of flour, one tablespoon of yeast, a half a tablespoon of salt, and mix that up well. 
In a separate bowl, I had melted my butter. And don't get your butter too hot because what typically happens is it clumps back up when you add anything else into it. So I uh, melted my butter. I added my hot milk to my butter, a uh, fourth cup of sugar, and whipped that up. And I poured my hot mixture into the flour and stirred it in. Then I added my egg, one egg, and I beat it slightly before I put it in. So that was my base. I stirred that up until it was well blended, and then I began to add the extra flour and knead it. So I kneaded it for probably a good 10 to 15 minutes because I wanted to make sure that I had a, had developed a nice amount of gluten in there because I knew I was going to be wrangling this chunk of dough around to try and form it into a pretzel. So I got it very well kneaded. Then I let it rest in an oiled bowl for about one hour or until it doubled in size. So I just kept a good eye on it and watched it rise. And it took about, it took a good hour to rise. Uh, sweet doughs tend to be heavy. So sometimes it's very difficult to get them to rise when it's cold outside. So you might want to set it on the top of your stove if, if you've been baking and your oven's a little bit warm or whatever, you yeah. know. I, I can speak from experience. I made Panatone for Christmas and it was literally an all day event. It took... <laughs> Four hours for the first rise. Yeah, it does. It's, it's just, if it's cold, it really it really makes a big difference mm -hmm. with your dough. If your house is cold, you know, and there's always all those old tricks of setting it in front of your register or whatever, but sometimes the easiest thing to do is just to preheat your oven and then shut it off and set your dough on top of the oven in your bowl to kind of, you know, get, gain some heat off of that. So after it rose for one hour, I prepared my pan and I took a large flat baking sheet and put a piece of parchment paper on it. I you don't grease your parchment paper or anything. Just parchment paper. Then I took my dough and I punched it down and kneaded it a little bit in the bowl. And then took it out on my well-cleaned stainless steel tabletop. If you do not have a stainless steel tabletop, you can definitely use your table as long as it's well-cleaned. And string it out on there. And I started to roll it out into a big snake. Like with Play-Doh. And I rolled it and rolled it and rolled it and rolled it and rolled it. And it got to be about three feet long and I tried to form it into a pretzel and it was pretty much formed into a big blob of snaky dough. So I thought, this isn't long enough. So I stretched it out longer and I kept working with it until, like I said, I got it to about six foot long. And then I formed it into the shape of a pretzel on uh, my baking sheet and pinched the ends in really good. And let that rise for another hour. So I covered that up with a towel and set it on my stove top after I had preheated my oven a little bit and let it rise on there for another hour. And then I baked it. And I baked it at 375 for 30 minutes. And what I did was I, I did it for like 10 minutes, checked it and turned it in my oven, 10 more minutes, checked it and turned it, and then 10 more to make sure it was done. The finished temperature of it should read about 190 to 200 degrees, and it should be like lightly browned on the top. So I took it out, let it cool, and then I made a frosting similar to what I would put on my cinnamon rolls for it, and it worked perfectly. It was just a butter, powdered sugar, milk, and vanilla. Some of the recipes that you read just tell you to mix uh, confectioner's sugar with a teaspoon of whatever extract you, you like, almond, vanilla, whatever, and water, and it makes a thin sort of a glaze and you pour over it. I went with the more rich flavored kind of icing frosting on it, uh, but I thinned it really well and just poured it on there, and it actually worked very well. It was very, very good. The whole family loved it. So I highly recommend it. It was a very good recipe. So if you're looking for something really fun to do for New Year's, I would definitely suggest the New Year's pretzel. And make sure to check us out online on Facebook and Instagram at Mary Mac Bakehouse, on Twitter at Mary Mac Podcast, and on our website, MaryMacPodcast.com. Thanks a lot for listening if you did, and if you didn't, too bad for you.